Stealthy melee. Southless would end Report up being deck. put in He's a group a against Eastern Oh my god, dude. NRG. This is tilting. Holy shit. Oh my, I can't watch this. But guys, look, we don't have a mercy. That's why we lost. We di we didn't have a mercy. Deck was Deck was trolling. Deck was griefing. And we didn't have a mercy, pit. so it we lost. It just seemed like at this point. Oh, right, by by the way, uh, Michael made a video for us. He wanted us to uh, check it out. He, you know Michael? He apparently made a video about us. We can watch that while in queue. It's about me. It, so. This is a video about me. Yeah, Michael made this. 17 minutes, guys. It's so long. Welcome back to another one of my videos, guys. Yeah, Today, yeah, that's me, guys. That's me. Of that's me. The rise, That's fantastic. the fall, we're going to dissect his professional <laughs> Yo, career. Yo, Olimov, thanks for the five dollars up, man. We're going to discuss my personal experiences with him and where he is today. And then lastly, we'll answer the question, is he good enough That's for the fantastic. Overwatch League? Yo, <laughs> Before we get into the this video, I thanks do lot. want to thanks announce lot, that Kungarna is doing a fiery giveaway, guys. What you could win is a new Arrow okay, Overwatch Okay, okay, Kungarna snapback, is giving a giveaway, a okay. Overwatch okay. League t-shirt, size extra large. And a nice fucking advertising, Michael. Ebay you want me to watch this video and a bunch of advertising? Enter, okay, okay. So okay. be sure to subscribe and check out the Gleam link down below for more details. It'll be at the okay, top of the description. Okay. All right, let's get right into it, boys. So first, we'll start off with Defran's professional Overwatch career. Defran has only played under one team and has only played with five players in his entire career. Yes, his career might have been short-lived, but it was nothing less of spectacular. Before he was a pro, he was a ladder player in EU. Grinding and climbing the ranks, he ended up being scouted by Selfless Gaming. On January yep, yep, that's 31st, true, that's true. Selfless announced the additions to the roster. That's fantastic. Technic on main tank, <laughs> legit RC as head coach, Yo, Fetters, thanks and for the As well as announcing the new additions, they also announced that they would be living in Atlanta. Oh, uh, we got a game. House. And this was actually really surprising to a lot of the community. We got a game. We'll watch some of it later. Much. We're gonna watch a video now about it was King Michael who made it. Wait, someone set the door. Hold on. Okay, let's watch it. King Michael. Uh, here we go. Because not many teams had houses at the time, and considering that Selfless had been a tier two team and never really showed that they could compete with top teams. It was definitely not expected. The additions Selfless made were decent, but nobody oh, had Ronin. high expectations. We got for by Ronin. Selfless had not been successful in the Overwatch scene yet. They would debut this roster this in the tier two tournaments. Ago. From February 6th the to the 13th, they would play in we got three owned. tournaments. We got two AG weeklies and a Cal Open. They ended up placing third through fourth in all three of them, losing to random unknown teams like Burgermen, Nameless, and Ronin. It was clear that the team was still going through a learning phase. They were obviously trying a lot of things out. They would have Defran, Sinatra, and Emong flexing to almost every hero possible with random combinations. One game you would see Defran on Zarya and Emong on Soldier. Then the next, it was the exact opposite with Defran on Soldier and Emong on Zarya. Along with that, they were clearly experimenting playstyles. As one fight, they would play extremely aggressive, and the next, they would play passive. With being a new team, they clearly struggled to find their identity. Yeah, and after true. losing he's these right. three tournaments, they still looked like an average tier 2 team. Five days after their most recent loss, they would sign up for their fourth tournament. The Enter the Arena Overwatch Tournament, organized by Razor. This tournament would feature some good tier 1 teams, like Hammers, who would eventually turn into LG Evil. They were fresh off a monthly melee win, as well as teams like Renegades, Team Liquid, and more. Here's a clip with Game of Storm, who was casting the Inter Overwatch Arena tournament and also casted the Cow Open and the two AG weeklies they played in prior. Not connecting right away there from Jake. 
definitely have their work cut out for them in this best of three Herix. And I really, I mean, going into this matchup, you got to agree, I, I, we definitely thought Hammers had the upper hand in this one. They were coming off a pretty big win streak uh, into this and Selfless, a team that had, you know, a, a couple of roster adjustments as of late. And coming into today just didn't look as, or excuse me, coming into this tournament didn't look super strong by any means. Uh, given their recent uh, failures in even weekly tournaments, they dropped to teams, I believe they dropped to, uh, they lost to Nameless a couple weeks ago. And then last week they lost to Ronin 0-2. And then they turned it around yesterday, beating Team Liquid and Denial Esports. So, yeah, Hamos really were really good. Hamos were do, one of the best uh, teams. They weren't able to do a couple weeks ago when they dropped those matches. You can hear him talking about Selfless's shortcomings in their previous tournaments. This was in their semi-finals match against Hammers, who were on a major winning streak at the time. During this match, Selfless went from looking like an average tier 2 team to competing with one of the best teams in North America at the time. And we would consistently see them pushing and rushing into the spawn door of Hammers. Now this was extremely shocking, especially considering how they were playing, because at the time, no one expected Selfless to even come close to competing with Hammers. But, after insane showing, they took a 2-1 victory. In the next match, they played against Renegades in the finals. In a very similar series like the one against Hammers, they would take it away with a 3-1 victory, where they showcased more of their aggressiveness and weird play style. This tournament was only the beginning of the new Selfless era. They would end up going on a crazy 37-game win streak tear. For the next 30 days, they won eight tournaments in a row against teams like Tempo, <laughs> Splice, Team Liquid, CLG, good times, good times. Denial, Gale Force Esports, and more. This would lead them to their biggest tournament yet, the Alienware Monthly Melee March. Going into this tournament, everyone was really intrigued to see how Selfless would stack up against some of the best teams in the world. Yo, Tracer Noob, With thank every you major so much North American support, team competing and aside America's from Envious, pursuit. They finally got their chance See to play later, against the sir. best North America had to offer. They were placed in a group with Immortals, Runaway, and LG Evil. After spending most of these maps spawn camping, they would finish the group 3-0. They would then move into the playoffs, where they would face FaZe. They would take an easy victory as well, which put them in the upper bracket finals against Rogue. This Dude, would be their this final match was test. Tilting as hell. They were able to take Holy. out Rogue. It would submit Selfless as being one of the we, best we were teams two zero could ever against offer. Rogue. Selfless we, came out in the series firing hard with two easy map wins early in the series, making it 2-0. But in crazy fashion, Rogue would slowly climb back into the series. And before this we knew so it, close, it was guys. going to this a match game was so five. Close. With it's Selfless crazy. trying their hardest to close the series out, Rogue just wouldn't be put away. They won it in a reverse sweep, 3-2. Here you can see stats of this match. Defran played absolutely out of his mind, completely outclassing every player in the match. And despite this incredible performance, they were still not able to close out the series. That's right though, they could still come back up to the finals. They moved through the loser bracket and faced Rogue in the grand final. This time again, they would come out strong and they would take a 2-1 <laughs> series lead. But as Rogue did before, they clawed their way back in. Their will to win seemed too strong. Selfless would end up losing the next two maps and they would lose the series 2-3 to three for the second you time so in a row. Selfless and Defran came extremely close to defeating Rogue, but they just weren't able to achieve the goal that they so desperately wanted of being the best in North America. Back-to-back 2-3 -back defeats when they had the lead must have been tough on the entire team. The next tournament Selfless hey, would logics. end up competing in was the Pit. Selfless would clean sweep their group, this going is five and out, only shit. dropping one map throughout. They would end up playing Rogue once again in the upper bracket finals of the pit. With their sights set on revenge, Selfless came out swinging once again and they took a lead for the third time in a row. They were up 2-1. But again, for some reason, Selfless just couldn't close the series out against Rogue. For the next two maps, Selfless looked stagnant and they couldn't make any plays. Defran looked like he was getting shut down, and Rogue clawed their way back into the series and took the victory. After this, they would go into the loser bracket finals against Team Liquid and actually lose 2-1. to one. So this would be the end of their... But guys, look, we don't have a mercy. That's why we lost. We, di we didn't have a mercy. Deck was, deck was trolling. Deck was griefing. And we didn't have a pit. mercy, so it we lost. It just seemed like, at this point, Rogue had Selfless's number. And it was clear that it was getting to them, especially after their loss to Team <laughs> But, with another opportunity looming in the air, three days after their loss in the pit, the April Monthly Melee, Selfless would end Report up being deck. put in a group a against Eastern, Oh my god, dude. NRG. This is tilting. Holy shit. 
Oh my, I can't watch this. This was so tilting, dude. I could have I could have killed this Farah and we would have won. Look at AKM, dude. He just goes deep. God damn and it. Immortals. And my position was so bad Celsius here. would actually end up losing games oh my to God. an unknown team called East I should have been on the high ground, as well dude. To But then, then again, actually I don't know. Surprised. My team wanted to take a fight, so maybe I shouldn't have been on the high ground. I don't know. Losing losses to Team Liquid, Eastwind, this and was... Immortals, oh it seemed like God, Selfless might bitch. be going downhill. Oh They'd end up being God. placed at the bottom of the loser's bracket and would end up having to climb. Look, my team wanted to take a fight here, so we have two fights, which makes sense, right? All the we way back up to the finals just to get another so shot we're going, rogue. We wanted two and the fights. next day, so I jumped down do too. just that, Look, though. I they jumped down, and I'm going on the low ground. And crawling their way all the way to the grand final. I shouldn't have jumped down. Up... Yo, yo, because look at, my team is just pushing up. So I thought, what the fuck am I doing? Should I stay on the low, the high ground and be safe? Or should I push up and help my team? So of course I need to help my team. So I push up here Playing rogue and help the team. Once again, it was so tilting. Time. This would now also be Selfless's last chance to I'm prove a, I, I don't everyone have wrong anymore. and claim victory because rogue would be leaving North America for Korea to play in Apex Season 3. Okay, now the I get fucked. Extremely high. I look up, I look up, I see the Pharah coming in. I miss my Helix. I miss my Helix. And he goes down and he kills me. Selfless wants... Because I'm not on the high ground. And then we lose the match. If I was alive, we would have won. Once again, would come out strong. And they took another 2-1 lead in the series. With another lead, it was still so hard to doubt Rogue would lose. With their will to win, it was just impossible to go against them, but, but there was one, also one this more. feeling of that there was no way Selfless would let this one go again. They would not let Rogue come back for the fourth time in a row. It just could not happen. I was torn on which storyline to believe. Was Selfless finally going to do it, or was Rogue going to do what they already did three times previously? But, as most of us already know, just like the other three games, almost perfectly written in the stars, Rogue came- Okay, so here- here, I I think I made a mistake. Look, Michael 3D nearly has ults. No one communicated that, so that's that that's the team. That's the team, not only me. I have ult, so I go on the high ground. And I I, I don't know why I went on the high ground, but I went on the high ground to try and create space, maybe to get a high ground. But I'm playing against dive, so I shouldn't go alone on the high ground, right? So would we have won if I went on the low ground with them? I don't Came know. Back and won the series for the fourth time. I'm going time up here. In a I'm using ult. I'm creating space. Row. And for the but last the time Selfless me. would ever be able to try to beat them. I mean, Selfless had to have been demoralized, heartbroken, I'm fucked. devastated. I mean, whatever depressing word. Should I went on the low ground with my team? But then the monkey ult with a monkey and a whole team. If I went on the low ground with my team, I would have gotten nano boost and then we would have won. We can think of. I think I made that a mistake. Is what they I must have felt after this loss. That I know so what tilting, it's like dude. to lose should, big I'm, matches. I don't guys. know if I should I've have won. I've played the low in big ground. tournaments and I have lost these crucial games. But Maybe I, I should have won. Imagine the, the feeling these players must have felt after losing no, you did four fine. times no, in a row with a lead over Rogue. This would have put them up with envy as one of the greatest teams in North America of all time. They could have been competing in Apex. They could have went on to be the best team in the entire world. But <laughs> oh, that's because they the couldn't prime. get past this one little I think I should have went on the low ground of defeating with Rogue, the team to get we will boost. never really know if their potential was that high or where they could have gone. So yeah, that was the last time they ever played Rogue. They would go on to lose the next two tournaments they competed in. Yeah, most yeah, notably, I don't want to talk about this. May Monthly, this is, I'm reformed. where we could see Defran clearly giving up and throwing against Yikes. And then the very last tournament they played was the Rumble in May. They would actually end up winning this one, this. and it would be the last tournament DeFran ever played. Ending up going 13-1 and one in maps throughout the entire tournament, it was a perfect way for DeFran to go out on top. But, of course, reformed, guys. Rogue wasn't there, so they weren't exactly on Look, top. Look, that joins me. Okay, that now that I've me. gone over DeFran's short but incredible run on Selfless as a pro, I'm going to go over my personal experiences with him. You guys might not know this, but I actually scrimmed against Selfless a decent amount when DeFran played for them. I first ran into their spawn camping strategy in a warm-up scrim for the first tournament they ever won, the Inter Overwatch Arena by Razor. My team was taken off guard. We were thinking in our heads, WTF, how is this working? There's no way they're going to do this in the tournament. After literally getting rolled on five maps in a row, they ended the block 30 minutes early because we weren't providing enough competition to warm them up for the tournament. After seeing them win the tournament too, we tried our best to schedule as many blocks with them as we could. This way, we could learn their playstyle and try to counter it. 
We would then end up competing against Southless three days later in the Rivalcade NA Weekly Number 1, where they were even more relentless. My team was left flabbergasted with how insane Dufran was playing. Like, literally, I've never played against one player in my entire career where I was like, oh my god, this guy is the absolute best. I can't do anything. <laughs> Going up against a French soldier was the hardest player on any hero to play against. It's not Effect on Tracer, it's not Time One Widow, not Unko on Zen, Soon on Tracer, Shadowburn on Genji. I keep going on and on in naming players that I've played against. Defran on Soldier was the hardest thing in all of Overwatch to play against. My <laughs> team would spend hours after scrims analyzing VODs of Selfless playing and watching Defran and trying to figure out on how we could counter them. We just couldn't comprehend how they got so good out of nowhere. They were literally just an average tier 2 team a couple weeks ago. Nothing made sense. After all this analyzing and practicing, we would always just end up coming to the solution that Defran was the best player to ever touch the game. Playing against him was like God playing it, a ghost. Dude. One second he's in one spot hitting you in the head with every single shot, and then the next second he's gone, and he's shooting you in the back. Boom, <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> Nothing you can do. From his aim to his movement, it was just incredible. After Selfless beat my team in that Rivalcade, we decided to take time off of tournaments to rethink and rebuild our team from strategy to players. I finally got another chance to play them though, <laughs> two months later in April and the monthly Rumble. And to my team's surprise, this was one of the closest matches we ever played. It was extremely close, with them beating us on the first map, King's Row, and then us beating them on the second map, Gibraltar. I don't know how we, we won this the game. third map, Dorado. To see who would win the series. This map was incredibly we should have lost this close. Game. He have we won. were steamrolling them through first and second. And we got the third with three minutes and 30 seconds left to cap halfway. We were unable to close it out. We last on the very last fight with only a meter left to cap the point. It felt really good to have an extremely close match with them. But I still can't shake that they were only playing worse because they were going through stuff internally and they were fresh off their fourth loss against Rogue. This would end up being the last time I got to compete in a match against a friend in a tournament. I did still get to scrim them a few times and as a team, it seemed that they were just getting worse and worse. And with every scrim, Defran seemed more human. To this day, I still believe that those four losses to Rogue were the downfall of Defran and Selfless. If Defran had beaten Rogue, he would have proved that he was the best player in the world the and on the best team in North America. The chat, and they would have never gone Why? downhill and lost to Yikes. <laughs> Selfless could have gone on to be one of the greatest teams NA ever had. But instead, they just fell hard. <laughs> and as Selfless fell, Defran fell. And he fell much harder. From throwing live in tournaments against Yikes, to throw in on stream and ranked. Defran clearly did not care anymore. I don't know exactly what caused Defran to throw games on stream. Some say he didn't know or understand what he was doing. Oh, look doing. at this post bomb, dude. Look at this. I, think Defran I see him in the recall. Burnt out look, look, Overwatch. look. Look, look, look at this. I want to show you this. I see the Anna in the recall. What? Look, I see, I see the Anna for a split second. And playing with Selfless. Defran Ooh. wanted out. He wanted to be free. He wanted to do things, but he couldn't. He was trapped in some house in Atlanta playing Overwatch 14 hours a day. Sure, I don't know exactly what he wanted to do. Maybe he wanted to see his family, have a real social life, or maybe he just wanted to go back to the <laughs> simple life of working at McDonald's. I don't know. But one thing I do know is that there is no way someone that amazing would not understand how heavy the consequences would be for his actions. Some have talked about the demons Dufran faced mentally, and I truly believe he just wanted a break. <laughs> so that's life. exactly what he Good got. Good joke. Blizzard would end up laying down the law on him. Banning I'm not going to talk about Contender why I Season didn't know Zero I'm not and Season One. I'm He's not going to talk about this. Also banned for the entirety of Season Five ranked and other competitive tournaments. This would lead to Defran taking a long break. He returned in ranked somewhere around October and started his stream up about three weeks ago in December. He has gained a legion of fans and he seems to be enjoying the life of a streamer and seems to be having a lot more fun. Yeah, I wouldn't true. say that's he is true. the same player he was before though. Of course, a long break is going to have its effects on his gameplay, but I think with more time yeah, and true. serious practice, Defran could easily return to his prime. So to answer your question, is Defran still good enough for the Overwatch League? Yes, he is, and he could even be the best player if he surpasses his previous peaks. He has though stated since, he isn't interested in playing pro anymore, and he wants to see where his stream leads him. His stream's doing great so far. In three weeks, he's already reached 2,000 subscribers. He seems to have yeah, a great thank you guys. future. Thank you guys. If he ever does decide to go pro again, I will be one of the biggest supporters of him. 
a return of the Fran would shake up the scene like no other, and if he surpasses his prime, he could really do some damage in the league. All in all, I think the Fran's a great player. I love watching his stream. You guys should definitely check him out. And that's going to be it. I hope you guys enjoyed this journey down to Fran's career. And maybe I was able to give you some insight that you guys might not have had before. Be sure to check Thanks, out the Abudi. giveaway down below yeah, in the description, thank you, guys. Give the video a like, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Oh, that video. Yeah. Competition, what you're getting into, essentially. I mean, really, rumor has it that, yeah, that was pretty nice. That was pretty nice. Mask, his true power is on. Pretty good video. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for the kind words, man. If you're watching, thanks a lot. Okay, eight inches. <laughs> eight inches. What do you mean?